So thank you again for being here today with us. I am uh, Enrico Signoretti, we, one of the founders of uh, Tech Unplugged. And uh, I am in the IT industry for a while now. I've been, in, uh, as I said, one of the founders. I built my boat. I know, you don't care, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a sailor, of course, and uh, I try to catch some fishes, but not very often, unfortunately. So, and you can find me on juco.it, which is my website, and uh, on Twitter. Uh, so, I want to talk about uh, today about uh, secondary storage because uh, looks like flashes the most important thing today in storage. Now we are all talking about flash. We are but actually, uh, this is not the only problem. And uh, uh, we usually represent storage with a pyramid, right? And the pyramid has uh, hot data on top and cold data down. And we think that the problem is usually here because we want high ops, we want low latency, we want consistency. And it's actually true. And uh, of course, when we buy storage, just because of this, we have a lot of dollars to spend on the, on the top, and going down, we spend less and less, okay? So tapes are very, very cheap to, to buy and maintain, okay? Uh, but they are also very cool. So uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, secondary storage is uh, for the enterprise, Okay, the traditional enterprise, 50% uh, of, uh, of the budget, of the storage budget, and probably 80-90% of the, of the world capacity, okay? Because the out part is very, very small. And uh, we need to, uh, we ask uh, different things to storage. Now, we told you, uh, primary is about latency, is about consistency, is about, uh, High ops, many times, okay? This is how we measure uh, primary storage. Well, secondary storage is all about capacity, okay? Throughput sometimes, but uh, actually it's a different metric. So when we, when we start uh, thinking about uh, different medias that we have in the storage, we have uh, RAM as the first storage, you know? Lately, uh, we have seen a lot of new startups working in the ephemeral storage. Also, EC2 has ephemeral storage, for example. No? It's, a, it's a way to have storage fast, okay? I'm not saying stateless or stateful. I'm just talking about storage. And then we have uh, uh, SSDs, or flash in general. We have disk, which is slower. And then we have tapes and cloud. And uh, uh, even though cloud is growing like crazy, it's also true that tape is not dead, okay? Uh, last year, uh, 76,000 petabytes of uh, healthy storage was delivered to end users, which is a growth on 18%. So actually, it's still an important media. Okay. So how do we map this storage in, uh, in, in a function of the kind of workloads that we have? As we said, we have all these uh, kinds of media, okay? And uh, we have tier zero here, so we have the very small latency that we need, very low latency that we need. And then we go down, tier one is flash now, tier two is disk, and potentially tapes are tier three. And also cloud, you know, is a, we use cloud as an expansion of our, our uh, infrastructure to get more space, but it's very, very far. And uh, so latency is very, very high because uh, it's, uh, I'm thinking about public cloud in this case. And, uh, but there are some nuances here and there. So sometimes we have workloads. This is, it's not clear if they are uh, tier one or tier two. So for some customer, we have uh, uh, five servers. For me, are not potentially tier one. For another customer, are tier one. So potentially there is, is not black and white, okay? But, uh, 
This is the wrong way to map storage in, uh, today. So we have different applications, like, for example, HPC and com uh, both the commercial and research. We have uh, uh, this kind of application that are really different from the past. We have Internet of Things, we have web scale application, big data, uh, traditional workloads. So we can, we can think about uh, local performance, okay? And I define local performance uh, like the performance that you have in the data center. So close to the server, okay, very close to the server. And you have distributed performance, probably because you have very long distances to cover, like in the I IoT kind of uh, workloads. You have many sensors all around the world. They produce a lot of data. Potentially the throughput at the data center is very high, but actually each one of them is very far and latency is not that important, okay? And uh, at the same, uh, on the other side, we have scale up, okay? And as Chris mentioned this morning, you know, two controllers arrays are very, very common. And in fact, you find that most of the uh, primary data are still sitting in uh, two or few controllers array, still today. It's not very common to find scale out uh, uh, applications, uh, scale out servers, scale out uh, Oh, sorry, scale out arrays for, for uh, primary data, okay? But uh, going up, we, we find that uh, to do Internet of Things, to do big data, to do HPC, the only way to scale is doing that in, on, on scale out uh, fashion. So what happens? We have, uh, if, we, if we map uh, the, the storage with technologies, so we have the primary block storage is a very, very small portion of our, of our storage. Traditional NAS is a little bit bigger. And uh, of course, it is less local. Now, if we have our server here connected to NVMe now, our technologies like that, it's very, very, scalability is limited, but, uh, but it's very, very close to the CPU, okay? And more do we, we go on the right, uh, you are far and far and far from the, from the CPU. So you have this kind of map. And in fact, if we mapping media, not by workload, but by application, we find that we have RAM here. Potentially, we have a flash in this position. And then we have disks that are still a huge part of our data centers. And uh, uh, cloud, which is uh, becoming bigger and bigger but still tape here down in uh, where the, you don't have the local performance, so the, it's not close to the, to the server, but even it's not very distributed like a, a cloud system, for example. Okay. So going forward, what is happening uh, today in the modern infrastructure? Okay. So there are trends. One of these trends is uh, hyperconvergence. So we have compute and primary storage collapsing together in a, in a single uh, scale-out appliance. Okay. So we have this trend of scale-out and uh, com convergence uh, of uh, different resources. And, uh, and what about storage? So the, the first thing is uh, what are the benefits of hyperconvergence? So there are many benefits. Simplification of the infrastructure, of course. Okay because you have this building block. It's like a Lego block. You, you put more blocks, you get more, of, uh, more resources. That's right. You have scalability, because it's easy to scale, just because they scale out model. So you, you add more building blocks, and you, and you scale. Ease of use, because uh, they are usually integrated with, uh, with the hypervisor. They are quite transparent to the end user. And consolidation, of course, because you have uh, less pieces and uh, more, more resources uh, together in the same infrastructure. Okay. Of course, at the end of the day, it's all about overall efficiency. It's not because uh, hyperconvergence is more efficient than, sing than the single components. We have already seen that it's not true. It's because at the end of the day, on average, it's more efficient to work this way instead of uh, micromanaging any single component. So at the end of the day, it's all about lower TCO, right? So, but uh, 
This is the same thing that we ask to secondary storage. We are asking for low TCO. At the end of the day, this is the most important thing. Dollar per gigabyte. Okay. This is so is storage hyperconvergence the answer? No. Uh, oh well, it could be. But I think it's the wrong, uh, the wrong word because it's a buzzword, and everyone is talking about uh, hyperconvergence today. That's that's just because it's fancy, it's cool, but actually it's not. Uh, it's not the right answer. There is another answer. Okay, and uh, for who reads my blog is obvious. Okay, so I am a fan of. Uh, of object storage, okay? But uh, I'm not talking about object storage here. Yeah? I'm talking about the fact that many vendors are working on a sort of universal storage, okay? Which is not, uh, uh, which is not the uh, unified storage that we uh, traditionally know. So it's not uh, putting together block and files, but it's and unified storage for uh, files, okay, for secondary workloads, for secondary data. And this is important because we can put together uh, NFS, SMB, and other protocols, also S3 APIs from the same storage. We can access data from the, uh, the same data from different uh, protocols, okay, which is much easier at the end of the day, and it uh, brings a lot of freedom. So. Of course, we have all the, uh, the same benefits that we have in hyperconvergence. Simplification, of course, because you have a simple uh, architecture, okay, an horizontal architecture that can s solve many different needs. So you don't need different silos to serve different workloads. And scalability, you know, object storage scales, right? But other, other technologies also scale out uh, file systems scales. It's, it's not about it, so it's about scale out. These technologies are all scale out now. And ease of use, of course. I was talking with a, with a vendor a few days ago, and they have an installation. It's more than 150 petabytes, and they have three person managing 150 petabytes. Okay? It's not usual. Okay? But, uh, and it's probably a single application, which changes a lot of things. But actually, it's easier to use than many smaller systems if you have the consolidation, if you have uh, the right platform to do that. And as I said, consolidation. With consolidation, there are a lot of benefits, okay? And some vendors are working on the fact that if you consolidate data in a single system, it's much easier to search data, to uh, analyze data, okay? Doing your reporting and whatever. If you have it distributed in many different systems, it's quite impossible. Or at least it, it's a very expensive. So again, we are on the overall efficiency. So a central repository for all the secondary data, which is data that is not accessed so frequently, or data which is not latency sensitive. Okay, and but you have all the benefits that I described. So again, it's about trends. In this case, okay, we are not talking about compute and storage, but we are talking about data and services. So by implementing services uh, on top of data, we can uh, achieve the hyperconvergence of storage. Okay, it's not about the storage itself, it's about the data we manage. So it's the different point of view. And of course, uh, this kind of system are not for everyone, okay? Because the benefits are uh, scalability and, uh, and consolidation. If you don't have anything to consolidate, it's not a problem. So, but uh, I, I did a small research in, uh, in the last uh, few months okay, with object storage vendor and scale out uh, storage in general. And I found that uh, most of them are in, in the range of 200, 300 terabytes. Okay, so considering that uh, a few years ago we were talking about uh, having uh, uh, object storage only at the petabyte scale, it's no longer true. There are many customers 
because the applications, not because, not because the, uh, the fact that uh, it's 100% convenient, okay? It's just because the application that you are running, like for example, SyncerShare or uh, remote NAS gateways uh, in a distributed organization, okay? You need no more than that, okay? I have customer running 80 terabytes now. So actually, it's very low for, a, for, a, for, a, for an object storage, for example. And uh, actually, it is possible to build a, a very small system, starting uh, with three, six nodes, eight terabyte disk, a small amount of flash. And uh, of course, it depends on the software architecture, okay? Not all the software are, are the same. And, uh, but uh, it's quite easy. You, you buy this two rec U servers with 12 disks, okay? It's 100 terabytes each. If you replicate the data three times, no right or right, you have uh, one terabyte. And of course, it's a good system because you can have two systems on, uh, on one building, another system on the other building, and, uh, and the customer already have a kind of disaster recovery, okay? It's very basic stuff. It's, it's not uh, sophisticated, but for many customers, it's more than enough. Of course, you could start smaller. There are, if you are familiar with Nutanix or uh, other uh, hyperconverged platforms, they all use this uh, four node server uh, from Supermicro and Dell produces something like that. And in the front, there are 24 disks. So you can have a very, a very small amount of storage for each one of the nodes. Of course, building this in a do-it-yourself fashion is too costly. Even if you build it with a Ceph or whatever, it does not make any sense. Of course, you can start here, and if you implement uh, services on top of it, it could be. But uh, actually, from the dollar per gigabyte perspective, it doesn't make sense. In this case, means that you, you have a small problem, okay? E even if it's a big problem for you, from the storage point of view, it's a small problem. And the best is to go to the cloud, okay? Because the cloud is uh, uh, probably cheaper, even though usually S3 or other services like that are not that cheap at the end of the day. For you, if you don't have enough data to manage, it's good enough, okay? And I'm not saying that uh, that you can't build a, a different kind of system just using this uh, uh, a different kind of service. So S3 is a good service at the end of the day. The, uh, the vast majority of uh, object storage vendors and uh, also file system vendors are now supporting S3. So actually, you can build the same ecosystem around uh, object storage. So as I said, I listened uh, to vendors and to end users. And this is the outcome. So most of them are actually starting well under 300 terabytes. Okay. Uh, even the largest of the vendors, for example, Itachi, uh, just doing the math, they are uh, in the order of uh, 260 terabytes. So we, which means that they have bigger customers, but also smaller customers. And this is just the average. Okay. So the best solution, uh, as I said, it really depends, okay? So public cloud is becoming really, really um, cost effective for small customers. As the number grow, is uh, it's cheaper to manage uh, uh, storage still on premises. Okay, I don't have a, an exact number to say after one petabyte is better uh, your uh, on premises storage. Okay, but uh, if you look at the trend, it mostly depends on the kind of workloads you are running on the cloud, of course. On the, on the kind of gateways you are using, on the kind of connector, and on the kind of applications, because some applications are much more optimized than others, okay? Because, you know, sending data to the cloud is quite cheap. Accessing it is very, very costly. 
So it really depends on how often you access data, you request data back. And uh, the classic example is uh, Glacier from, from Amazon. No? It's, uh, putting something there costs one, uh, one, uh, one cent per, per gigabyte per month. But if you start accessing data back, it's not only a problem of uh, uh, latency, okay, which is huge in, in, uh, in the order of hours, but it's just that when you access data, you pay a lot of money. So, uh, as I promised, um, I'm very, very quick, closing the circle. And uh, secondary storage is growing faster than anything else in our organizations. Okay. I see it uh, all the time with uh, all uh, the enterprise applications. I'm not talking about startup. I'm not talking about uh, people doing verticals. I'm talking about uh, manufacturing companies. I'm talking about real enterprises doing something else and using IT to, to do their, their daily job. Okay. But uh, no matter what you do, the problem is that uh, secondary storage is what really goes. Okay. So this is, this is a real problem. And uh, you need to find a solution both in terms of TCA and TCO. Okay. You have to find something that costs little money when you buy it. But you also need something that uh, costs little money to, to manage, especially in the long term. So a solu uh, solution depends on the size of the company. Most of, uh, in, in some cases, it could depend uh, on the workloads. But actually, uh, if we are talking about uh, traditional customer in the enterprise space, depends on the size of the company. They, most, most of the workloads are very, very comparable. And uh, if you don't have enough storage, it's much better now to go to the cloud. And it's, uh, it's easier to manage. There are many, many service providers. There are many gateways. Um, so it's not, uh, it's not a question to, on uh, how. It's probably more a question of when. Okay. Uh, if you are bigger and you have data to manage, okay, we can talk about it. But that's, uh, that's less of a... I lost, sorry. And uh, last but not least, uh, for uh, the vast majority of the storage system, the most important thing is becoming the ecosystem around the storage system. So the storage system itself, and uh, I am talking about uh, uh, object storage and file systems, so no difference, okay? is what you can do with it. And it's no longer a question about uh, uh, NFS, because if you have a, a, an Internet of Things kind of application, NFS doesn't work. OK, so uh, I, if you have, I have, a, uh, I have a customer that uh, builds a fitness machinery. They have uh, over 200,000 machines per year installed. Each one of them has a connected is connected to the internet, and they send back home uh, files, okay, micro files, which are logs at the end of the day. And you can't, uh, so uh, each one of these machines send back a message every 15 minutes. They are producing it six, six or seven years now they have, that they are producing these machines. Try to imagine. Do multiply the number of machines, the number of years, uh, the number of logs they have. Just to collect the logs is a problem. Okay, so you have you have to find uh, uh, an ecosystem around the uh, around the storage system to to have the application running uh, in the right way. Okay, and uh, there are many applications now. Sync and share is growing. Uh, also, backup system are now growing uh, a lot uh, in, in the sense that they are uh, using much more than in the past uh, S3 interfaces instead of uh, pushing data to a VTL. 
Okay. Many customers are choosing this way to, to do their backups. And uh, I think that's, that's it. Did I? Okay, good. <laughs> no, because I, don't, I didn't see the, the sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, any question? Uh, it's, it's just a, it, it, it's not optimized. At the end of the day, you can do everything, okay, if you want to do it well. So there are other platforms that are collapsing data services on top of uh, this kind of uh, uh, infrastructures, okay, which are much more optimized. I, I'm thinking about uh, collapsing backup, analytics, and uh, other stuff, because in the moment that that you have uh, all this data consolidated, okay, and you want to use it, like uh, doing uh, Google-like search or uh, uh, other stuff. Y you can do that on Nutanix, not because it doesn't work, but, it be but because it's it already doing a lot of, it is already doing a lot of stuff. So virtual machines and, uh, I don't know, in the future, containers, whatever, okay. And, uh, and you, put, you put also data and backups and what else on top of that. So in secondary storage, I think about everything. So it's about tapes, uh, sorry, it's about backups, it's about archiving, it's about uh, file servers sometimes. Okay. That is true if you think that you are going to use the same file system for everything underneath. But if you do something well, for objects, so don't, don't think about the backend. The backend could be a yeah, file system or a, so. If you if you look, there are many many scale out uh, many. There are some scale out vendors now, uh, and these scale out vendors they have a file system, but they are exposing HDFS, uh, NFS, SMB free, and uh, at the end of the day also S free. Okay. So yeah, you, we can argue that the S3 implementation is not the best of this world, but put, get, blade, they work, okay? And potentially you can use a sync and share on top of it, if it is supported. So the, the idea is to have, a, uh, to build a data-centric infrastructure and on top of it, uh, build services. And this, what is happening for many, many vendors. If you look at many object storage vendors, two years ago, they were saying, no, no, we are working only with APIs. Our storage is API only. <laughs> if you talk today to all storage, object storage vendors, eh, including Caringo, they have file services. Okay, they are not implemented as a traditional file service. Okay, this is the, the point of view, they, they, uh, they way to implement the, the code. But, but if you go to SwiftTech, SwiftTech, they, they, are, they are implementing NFS at SMB. If you are going to, I don't know, Scality, uh, they have scale out NFS and, and so on. And uh, at the same time, you, you go to Isilon and they have uh, S3, uh, they have Swift implemented. Uh, and so, 